First, we introduce intervals. The formal definition of an interval, say i, is a subset of the real numbers with the property that for all x y in i, whenever z is a number between x and y, then z is in i. This means that an interval is a continuous subset of the real numbers. There are no missing numbers between any two points in an interval. Every interval of the real numbers has two endpoints, say a and b, and takes one of the following forms. The first one is known as a closed interval, where the interval is the set of real numbers x such that x is between a and b, including both of its endpoints. We use square brackets a comma b to denote this interval. The second type is called an open interval, in which both of its endpoints are excluded. An open interval is denoted by round brackets a comma b. Then we also have the cases where only one of the endpoints is included, and the included endpoint is enclosed by a square bracket. In this notation. It is also allowed to have a or b replaced by plus or minus infinity, and the definitions are consistent. For example, square brackets a comma infinity is the set of all real numbers x such that a is less than or equal to x is less than infinity, or simply x is greater than or equal to a. Round brackets negative infinity comma b. Is the set of all real numbers negative infinity less than x less than b, or simply x less than b? Note that positive or negative infinity is never included in an interval because they are not real numbers. Now we introduce the notion of infinite unions and intersections. Suppose a n is a set for every positive integer n. We define the infinite union of the a n's. As a set of x such that x is an a n for some positive integer n. Here we only require that x is in at least one of the sets a n, but it can be in many of them. We also define the infinite intersection of the a n's as a set of x such that x is an a n for every positive integer n. Note that by definition, a n is a subset of the infinite union of the a n's. And the infinite intersection of the a n's is a subset of a n for every positive integer n. If we want to consider a finite union or a finite intersection instead, then we may replace the infinity by a variable k to mean the union or intersection of the sets a one up to a k. This notation works in exactly the same way as the summation notation. Before we see some examples of infinite unions and intersections, we have to talk about the Archimedean axiom. It states that given any real number x, there is a positive integer n such that n is greater than x. It means that no matter what real number that you give me, I can always find a positive integer which is larger. This makes sense because x is a real number means that it is finite, so I can always add one. A round up to a larger number. Note that this is an axiom, which is a fact that we mathematicians take for granted. That means we assume that the axioms are true, and build theorems and results based on them. So we may use the Archimedean axiom any time that we like. Now let's look at an example. We want to prove that the infinite union of the intervals zero to one minus one over n. Is equal to the interval zero to n, including zero. This is an equality of two sets, so we use double inclusion. First, let x be an element of the left-hand side. Then, there is a positive integer capital N such that x is in the interval zero comma one minus one over n. This implies that zero is less than or equal to x, is less than one minus one over n. Which is less than one, so x is in the interval zero comma one. Hence, the infinite union is contained in the interval zero comma one. Conversely, let x be an element of the interval zero comma one. We have to find an n such that x is in the interval zero comma one minus one over n. For x to be in that interval, 
we need x to be less than 1 minus 1 over n, which holds if and only if 1 over n is less than 1 minus x, or n is greater than 1 over 1 minus x. Now, we can find such an n by applying the Archimedean axiom. Then 1 minus x is greater than 1 over n, or x is less than 1 minus 1 over n. Now, 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 1 minus 1 over n, so x is in the interval 0, 1 minus 1 over n. This implies that x is in the infinite union of the intervals 0, 1 minus 1 over n, and so the other inclusion is complete. Now, let's look at a proof involving infinite intersection. We want to show that the infinite intersection of the open intervals 1 minus 1 over n, comma 1 plus 1 over n, is the set containing 1. Let's do the easier direction first, that the set 1 is a subset of the infinite intersection. So, let x be an element of the set 1, that is, x equals 1, then 1 minus 1 over n is less than x, is less than 1 plus 1 over n, for all positive integers n. This implies that x is in the interval 1 minus 1 over n, comma 1 plus 1 over n, for all positive integers n. That means that x is in the infinite intersection of these intervals. Hence, the infinite intersection contains the set 1. Conversely, suppose x is an element of the infinite intersection. Then, x is in the intervals 1 minus 1 over n, comma 1 plus 1 over n, for all positive integers n. So, 1 minus 1 over n is less than x, is less than 1 plus 1 over n, for all positive integers n. Label this as star. We need to show that x equals 1. We are going to show that assuming x is greater than 1, and x is less than 1, each leads to a contradiction. Then we must have x is less than or equal to 1, and x is greater than or equal to 1, which implies that x equals 1. So first we assume that x is greater than 1. We look at the number line. We know that x is less than 1 plus 1 over n for all positive integers n. Observe that, as n increases, 1 plus 1 over n gets closer and closer to 1. So when capital N is large enough, 1 plus 1 over n becomes less than x, which is a contradiction to star. Now, 1 plus 1 over n is less than x holds if and only if 1 over n is less than x minus 1, which holds if and only if n is greater than 1 over x minus 1. Again, we can find such an n by the Archimedean axiom. So we obtain that x is greater than 1 plus 1 over n, which is a contradiction that we wanted. Similarly, if we assume that x is less than 1, then we can find an n such that 1 minus 1 over n is greater than x, another contradiction. So, we must have x equals 1, or x is in this set containing 1, which completes the proof.